Welcome to this NeuroCentral video interview. To introduce myself, I'm Lauren Pulling, editor of NeuroCentral, and today I'm joined by Professor Nick Fox, director of the Dementia Research Centre and professor of clinical neurology at University College London in the UK. So thanks very much for joining us today, Nick. So first, please could you tell us a little about your background and your current roles? So, so my name is Nick, Nick Fox, I'm a neurologist. I uh, direct the Dementia Research Centre here. I have a busy clinical practice seeing people uh, with dementia. And a particular interest has been in people with very uh, early onset uh, um, dementias, such as Alzheimer's disease, but uh, also in picking up the very early changes that uh, are in part of this pre-symptomatic phase of different dementias. Great, thank you. And so it was recently announced that you're going to be co-leading a study into the early stages of Alzheimer's and dementia and this will involve a cohort of 500 taken from the MRC's uh, 1946 survey of health and development. Can you tell us more about this study and the significance of this cohort? So I'm really interested in this, in this project. The project involves 500 subjects who were part of this amazing birth cohort. So in 1946, uh, mothers who were giving birth to children right across um, England, Scotland and Wales were asked in one week of uh, March 1946 whether they would enrol into a study. Now, I think there was concern after the war about um, childhood development and in fact it was called the National Survey of Health and Development. But instead of running, as I think it might have been originally envisaged for the first year or two, those individuals have been followed ever since, with over 23 waves of assessments. So we, these individuals have given information about their childhood development, how they did at school, uh, what their teenage life was like, uh, what they did in jobs, whether they had uh, midlife uh, illnesses, hypertension, depression, and they've been followed all the way through to now aged about 70. So they're a remarkable group, and up until now, uh, outcomes related to um, brain imaging have not been studied. So we will be t taking 500 individuals randomly selected from the original birth cohort and looking at brain uh, structure, uh, vascular damage or lesions, and also amyloid imaging, together with a whole host of cognitive and other measures. So we'll be able really to look at cognitive health and some of the most up-to-date biomarkers and imaging measures that tell us about what's going on in the brain. And what that allows us to do is to have a window, the study is actually called Insight 46, get insight into what's going on which may predict dementia and cognitive decline as people go from their current age of 70, 75, 80 and on as things get more prevalent. And so what do you hope to find from this study and what impact could these findings have on future research in Alzheimer's and dementia? So what's remarkable about the study is of course we've got this rich life course data knowing everything about them which includes questions through their life about whether or not they'd had a head injury, whether they played certain sports, whether they'd done boxing and what that means is that we can put together information that had been recorded at the time rather than just asking people to remember it with these brain imaging findings. So we'd like to look into what leads you to have changes in the brain that may be the earliest signs of Alzheimer's disease. So we'll be able to um, look at what has led to these brain changes, the causes, and we'll be able to follow people to look at the consequences. So it is this wonderful coming together of 70 years of these people generously taking part in research with really quite focused investigations and technology that can now allow us to look into the brain that couldn't have been dreamt about in 1946. So if an early biomarker for Alzheimer's disease were to be found, do you think it's likely that we could see screening for Alzheimer's as standard in the next 10 to 20 years? And what are the issues that might surround this? We will be 
in the study helping to uh, understand early changes and, and, and biomarker changes, imaging changes. And one element of the study will be to look at what, what leads to Alzheimer's disease, what leads to vascular dementia. Does head injury predispose you to uh, cognitive decline? Does it predispose you to other things? Uh, along with everything else we know about their life course. But in addition, these findings will allow us to look at what's predictive. And uh, I think the key determiner to whether or not any biomarker we find or imaging changes that we find will go into clinical practice or even screening will depend upon effective treatments. So if we have really effective treatments like for some of those uh, diseases, such as some cancers, for example, where we have screening programs, it's only when we have interventions that would, where it really makes it worthwhile to screen that we would want to find that. So you're also using the 1946 cohort to investigate head injury correlates of dementia. Can you tell us more about this? So there's been great interest in knowing whether or not head injury um, causes Alzheimer's disease, whether it causes uh, cognitive decline of a different sort, we'd, we'd like to try and disentangle some of that or contribute to that. And we have the advantage of having asked people during their life about head injury, so it's not just relying upon what they can remember, and also having this really rich data set about other things that could also have contributed together with their genetics, together with uh, other environmental factors. So we hope that this will help us to understand the contributions uh, of head injury to the changes in the brain and to ultimately people's cognitive and functional state. And so how crucial is this long-term population-wide data in the search for biomarkers and correlates of dementia? It's a major public health issue um, well, dementia certainly is. And anything that we can do to uh, re reduce the incidence, or at least to inform people about what things that they could do uh, and when um, that would reduce their chances of what is now the most feared condition, dementia has now overtaken cancer, as people's most feared medical outcome in those over the age of 45. So to be able to say uh, more definitively about the sort of things that increase your risk would be really important at an individual level. And it should be important at a population level to, to change what people are, are doing if we can to reduce the risk of, of what is, is really a, a, a dreadful um, consequence um, which, we, which, which has impacts beyond the individual and onto families and society. Great, and so finally, when do you think that we can expect to see the first results from this study? Well, the, the, the imaging uh, is, and the assessments of the 500 individuals is underway. We, f we hope to complete the cross-sectional, the first pass, by the end of this year, by the end of 2017. So we'll be able to analyse things early 18, early 2018, and then there is a, um, a, a follow-up, which, uh, which will mean that we will get further results uh, over the next uh, couple of years. So there'll be results out pretty soon, in the next, within the next year. There'll be results of the first follow-up of those individuals a year or two after that. But the history of the 1946 birth cohort is that when you thought you'd be following people for a year or two, People have so far been followed for 70 years. We expect this research to continue to uh, inform and provide um, useful insights for the rest of these individuals' lives. Great, and thanks so much for joining us today, Nick, and sharing your work with us. And thank you very much for watching this NeuroCentral video. Remember, you can find more videos as well as news, free journal articles, and interviews with experts across neurology and neuroscience at www.neuro-central.com.